Fox. All right, the European Central Bank said today that it's going to temporarily stop lending to some Greek banks in order to limit its risks. This comes as the president of the Central Bank, Mario Draghi, acknowledged for the first time that Greece could leave the Eurozone. Well, what could Greece's exit mean for the rest of the struggling European Eurozone countries? Let's ask John Malden. He is the president of Millennium Wave Advisors. He's also the author of The Little Book of Bullseye Investing. John, a pleasure. Good to have you with us. It's always good to be All with right. you, Pam. So let's talk about Mario Draghi, the European Union, the Eurozone, Greece. Also, you got a word out from Christine Lagarde, the head of the International Monetary Fund, saying that technically this could happen. We could get an exit from the Eurozone. You think what a gonna... shock. Yeah. What a shock. What do you think? going to happen? Well, I think I was writing that two years ago. I mean, it's arithmetic. They don't have enough money to pay their bills. The European Union has gotten all of their bank debt out. So they, they gave them the money to pay their bank. So they're clean. So now Greece wants more money to continue where they are. And the rest of the union is going, well, you know, we've, we've been pouring money down this before. They want to see the continued austerity path. The problem is austerity is leading to 20% unemployment, uh, uh, massive pension cuts. It's hard for people to deal with this and to understand it. No group can. You've got three problems in Europe. You've got the sovereign debt crisis. All these countries have borrowed too much money. And not just Greece. It's, you know, it's Spain, it's Italy, it is France on the way. France is going to be a big problem in a few years a big problem. That's the real problem. That's when we'll see whether the European Union can stick together. Because then you get the second problem, which is banks. Banks uh, took too much of that debt on, and they did it in a leveraged manner, 30 to 1. I mean, a leverage that if, you, you know, U.S. banks, they would shut them down for this type of thing. Uh, then you've got the third leg, which none of the European leaders really want to recognize, and that's the trade imbalance. You've got to solve the massive differentiation between German and northern tier productivity versus Greece and Spanish productivity. And that requires a 30% lowering of the rates of the relative wages in Greece, Italy, so forth, Spain, or an increase in the wages and inflation. 30%. 30%. It's monster, and it's happened in 10 years. I mean, the, so this is not something that's going to be fixed in 10 months. No, it's not going to be fixed in 10 months. It's going to take many, many years if they stay in the euro. The only way for Greece to deal with it is to leave the euro, get the drachma. Now, it's going to be a massive dislocation. It's a disaster of the first order, but staying in the euro is a second order disaster. So you pick which disaster you want. They have no good solutions. Their good solutions were eight or nine years ago when they joined. Let me, give you, let me give you 10 seconds for a solution for your money. If you had new money to invest right now, what would you do with it? Uh, I still want to put it into uh, fixed income. I'm, I'm not an equities guy. I'm waiting, like in my book, I'm waiting for the end uh, of, the, of the secular bear market, which is only a few years away. Then we can all be brilliant again. We can be geniuses. Stocks will go up. We've got to leave it there. John there Malden, you go. thanks very much.